In this video, we're gonna talk about how to sound like George Shearing. And one of the things that he does is block chords. In other videos, I've talked about block chords, but in this video, we're gonna focus on the sixth diminished scale, something that Barry Harris talks about, but also is used by George Shearing. And we're gonna apply it to a specific tune, Blue Bossa. Now, if you take a look at the screen, I've written out an arrangement of block chords over Blue Bassa. And it's one thing to actually look at that, download it, practice it. It's another thing to understand where it's coming from. And it's coming from the sixth diminished scale. So whether you're going through C minor or F minor or D half diminished seventh, I've tried to keep consistent throughout the entire arrangement the whole concept of the sixth diminished scale. So let's take a look at what that would look like, the sixth diminished scale in the key of C minor. Let's just throw in some clefs and a key signature, in this case, C minor. And let's write out a C minor scale. So you've got C, D, E flat, F, and then G. And we're gonna go to A natural here. Now, why are we doing that? Because the sixth diminished scale means that the first chord is a sixth chord. So if the chord over C is C minor sixth, that has an A natural in it, and that's why we put it in A natural. And then we're gonna go to B flat, which is in the key signature, and then B natural. Now, the reason why that is, is because that's the major seventh of a C minor scale. So again, if we're in C minor, go to the major seventh and make a diminished chord. So in this case, B diminished. So why do that? Because the plan is for playing block chords and for arranging techniques, it's basically every other note, which is that note, that one, that one, and that one are all based on the diminished chord that's based on the major seventh, which is a B, D, F, and A flat. So that's your B diminished seventh chord. So that means we're going from C minor sixth to B diminished seventh to C minor sixth to B diminished seventh to C minor sixth to B diminished seventh to C minor sixth to B diminished seventh. So the scale basically looks like this. If we're, if we're plunking down a C minor six chord, it's this. And then the next chord is B diminished going up the scale. So if we started on C, it would be this. So I can either start on C in the thumb or C at the top in your fifth finger. So I'm starting in this inversion. Or I'm starting in this inversion. Doesn't matter where you start, the goal is the same. Always C minor sixth to B diminished seventh. Now, if we're in F minor, let's just take a look at that for a second. If we're doing F minor, that means that the root is F and the major seventh is an E natural. So that would mean an E diminished seventh chord. So you're playing F minor to E diminished seventh, F minor to E diminished seventh. And of course, we already know that it's an F minor sixth chord. So that's where the arranging comes from. Okay, so F minor sixth, like this, to E diminished seventh. F minor sixth, and so on and so forth. So that's how the sixth diminished scale works. So basically the first chord is a sixth chord. Now it could be a major sixth. So in other words, if we're doing a major sixth diminished scale, same, but in this case, we're doing a minor sixth. Now, with your left hand, you're basically emulating what the fifth finger in the right hand is doing. So if we're starting on C, 
the left hand is starting on C and just playing the same notes as in the top of the voicing. And that's where the block chords come from. You're surrounding the chord with octaves on the outside. And that is very reminiscent of George Shearing. So if you want to sound like him, you're going to have to learn how to do these things. Now, the good news in all of this is that I've actually written out an arrangement of Blue Bassa, which uses those sixth diminished patterns. So for example, we're starting on a C minor sixth chord with the melody being G. And then every other chord is a B diminished seventh chord. And then where we're going to F minor seven, every other chord is an E diminished chord. Right, there's our E diminished to F minor six chord. The D half diminished chord is a little bit different because the melody doesn't really lend itself to playing the sixth diminished scale, but I've written some block chords in there anyway. And then we're back to the C minor sixth diminished scale. So it doesn't always work depending on the melody note. If the melody note doesn't contain the natural sixth and the major seventh, then you have to find alternatives. And then we go to E flat minor seven to A flat seven, then to D flat major seven. So let's try that for the E flat minor seven. And then we're skipping down to A flat seven. And then we're doing a D flat. So again, not a perfect sixth diminished scale, but we're finding chords that work with the melody note and encompassing them inside the octaves making those block chords. So the sixth diminished scale is really handy if the notes do fall in the scale of a sixth diminished scale. But if it's not, then you have to find alternatives for it. And I think that's really why I've written this thing out. Now, it's a good idea to download it and practice it and get those chords underneath your fingers. What I'm going to do now is play it for you, and you'll hear very much that George Shearing sound when I do it. When I get back, I'm going to post a link to this sheet music and the backing track that I've recorded. It has bass and drums over Blue Bassa. All right, let me play it for you now and I'll come right back and post the links.
Okay, there you go. I posted a little bit of improvising over it using bebop scales, and that's gonna be the subject of our next tutorial. I'm gonna put a link to that tutorial at the end of this one, so you can go check that out. It's basically tackling Blue Bossa by understanding bebop scales. All right, let me post a link to the sheet music and the backing track. I'm gonna throw that up here in the corner. Highly recommended to go and download that and practice it. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And by the way, when you're visiting jazzmental.com, just check out some of the other things that are there. A lot of it is designed to help you become a better jazz piano player. If you wanna to subscribe to the channel, we'd love to have you here. Just hit the little bell when you do because you'll be notified of all the upcoming videos that we're making. Thanks so much for your time. We will see you in the next video.